system unit came with either no, one, or two diskette drives. Here there's a single diskette drive in it. Originally it would have held 160 kilobytes of information. Inside you could have as little as 32 kilobytes with a diskette drive or as much as 256 kilobytes if you really filled it up. Notice that the keyboard is very different than the current keyboard. It's only got 83 keys. It's got the function keys over on the side rather than across the top. It doesn't have the inverted cursor, uh, in, inverted T of cursor symbols over here. It actually shares the cursor movement with the uh, numeric pad, which is the whole reason for the numlock key. And I'm probably the only person in the world who can explain what numlock really does since I wrote the code to make it work way back, way back when. Then also, notice that there's a single control key, a single alt key, and a single delete key chosen to make it very difficult to hit them randomly, but the only way you could do it um, by accident was to sit on the keyboard. How much more do you want the what's uh, inside of What's inside of the, the CPU? The processor is an Intel 8088 running at just a little under five megahertz. It has five slots into which you can plug in additional devices. However, since the system board has virtually nothing on it other than the processor and memory, you had to use a slot for the diskette drive adapter, you needed a slot for the display adapter, you needed a slot if you wanted to add an additional 64K bytes of memory, you needed a slot if you were going to attach a printer, you needed another slot if you're going to attach a modem or something like that. So it was very limited in functionality compared to today's machines. But at the time, it was an impressive business tool.